Number 64. Calculate the cadmium ion concentration, which is CD2+, in a solution prepared by mixing 0.100 liters of a 0.0100 molarity CDNO32 with a 1.150 liters of 0.100 NH3 aqueous solution. Okay, so we want to find out what the cadmium ion concentration is, and we have these two compounds. So we have CD which is NO32, and we're mixing this, so literally ad addition, right? If we're mixing two things together, we're just adding them together, and we're mixing it with NH3. Now, the key to this problem is to know what is going to be reacting on the other side. Well, CDNO3, keep in mind your solubility rules, anytime that you have a nitrate, those are always aqueous uh, solutions. So this is always going to be aqueous and it's gonna break down 100% into its two ions. The cadmium, and they told us that the cadmium was a two plus charge, and then the nitrate. Now, which one of these two is going to react with the ammonia that's being added, right? Well, chances are it's going to be the metal, right? Metals with ligands will make complex ions. So that's the new introduction to this section in the chapter. We're now learning how to make complex ions. Complex ions come from metals combined with, chances are it's either going to be a, a neutral covalent compound or a negatively charged covalent compound. In this case, ammonia is neutral. So the cadmium, and the ammonia are the ones that are going to be making the complex ion. And the complex ion is basically when you have these two together with a additional charge that they both share. Now, I went to the back of the textbook because we can't do this question without finding the complex ion equation with its corresponding formation value. So in this case, the only equation is with cadmium 2 plus coming in with that ammonia to make CDNH3 4 with an overall plus 2 charge. Technically, whenever you see these brackets and a charge, you know that that's going to be a complex ion. And I wrote down the uh, KF, which is basically like the formation uh, you know, constant of 1.3 times 10 to the seventh. So F in this case stands for forming the complex ion, formation. Okay. So just pause the video if you need to, because this is the background story as to how we got that equation. So I just have to erase it. And actually, actually, I shouldn't have erased it. What we're going to do now is we're going to do the actual math. So keep in mind that from CDNO32, I just care about the cadmium and the ammonia. I actually care about the ammonia, right? And if we're mixing together, especially if we have molarities and a liter with one thing coming in with a liter and a molarity for the other thing, we think of that equation that we have been using in Gen Chem 1, right? Which is, let me put it over here, M1V1 equals M2V2. We have to do this twice. We have to do it for the cadmium and the ammonia. Now just make sure that there was only one cadmium per one CDNO32. So this is a one to one mole ratio, which means that I do not have to change that molarity that I started with from the cadmium. So we'll do this for the CD2 plus, and we'll do it for the NH3. And maybe I'll put the NH3 in a different color so that when we do the math, uh, it doesn't get confusing. Okay, so, M1V1 equals M2V2 for the cadmium. Remember, the M1V1s, those are your initials, and then this is after the mixing. V2 is always the final volume. What we basically need to solve for is we need to solve for that new molarity when we added those volumes together. The two volumes here are going to be the 0 0.100 liters from the cadmium compound plus the 1.150 from the ammonia. So let's do cadmium first. The initials were 0 
times that volume, 0 0.100, and this equals, if I just bring this out a little bit over here, the new molarity, which is what I'm solving for, x, times the total volume. So the total volume is 1.250, if you want to add the, uh, the zero there. Let's solve for x by just dividing by the 1.250, 1 1.250. This gets canceled. And now we're left with x equals on this side, the starting molarity is going to be 1.25, eight times 10 to the negative fourth. And that's molarity of the CD. And that's the initial concentration. So I'm gonna put that over here. So the, the cadmium concentration was eight times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay. Now let's do the same thing for the ammonia. M1V1 equals M2V2. Here were the initial volume and the molarity for the ammonia. So 0 0.100 times 1 1.150 equals X. We're solving for that new molarity times the total volume, which is 1.250. Okay, we wanna solve for X. So we're just gonna divide on both sides by that same number, 1.250, 1.250. This gets canceled out. And I have X equals 0.1 times 1.15 divided by 1.25. I get a much bigger number, 0 0.092. And that's the molarity starting of the ammonia. So I'm gonna put that over here, 0 0.092. And at the start, this is the starting molarities. We did not have any starting of the complex ion. So I'm just gonna put a zero here. Now, pause the video if you need to, because now I'm going to erase this math. We have much more math to do. So M1V1 is done. We don't have to look at that again. We're just gonna be dealing with those top two numbers. So bye-bye. Okay. Now, the thing is, is that if we're using a KF equation, that means that we have to form some of our complex ion. But in this case, we, didn't, we don't have anything that's formed. So I can't use this equation yet. So this is now coming back to a limiting reagent problem. Remember back in the day when we first started doing like balancing stoichiometry equations, when you had two starting values, which one is going to be the limiting reagent? In this case, since we're talking about molarity and they have the same volume now, we can just talk about this in terms of moles because the volumes are constant. Now, this number of quote unquote moles is much less than this. So the cadmium is going to get all basically used up before you get, you're able to use up your NH3. So I can start this by doing like an ice table. ICE, because these are technically initial concentrations. So this is coming back to the ice table, but now we're just doing it in a style of um, limiting reagents. I mean, how fun is that? I know, I know. Let me just, oh boy, I need to bring this way down. So that goes down, that goes down. Everything looks good now, let's bring that eye down, okay. So now we know that per chance, we're going to basically subtract all of this. Now we do this because we wanna make it easy for ourselves. We know that at equilibrium, we have to have some cadmium, but it's going to be so small that it's probably gonna resemble zero, right? It's gonna be super, super close to the number zero. So that's why, general, I'm just going to uh, uh, you know, subtract all of the cadmium. But now I have to use this value and divvy it up per what the mole ratio says. So in this case, I have to subtract because if we're subtracting on one side of the equation, I do it for the, the same side. But now there's a four in front of here. So that means that since it was a one to four, this subtraction has to be four times the amount. So I'm gonna have to times that value by four. 
So four times eight times 10 to the negative fourth. And then on this side, now I'm going to add that eight times 10 to the negative fourth. Keep in mind that there is only one complex ion, so it goes back to whatever the start was here. Now let's just find out what these equilibrium values are. Well, this minus this is basically zero. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, but for now we say it's zero. Now let's find out this value. 0 0.092 minus four times eight to the negative fourth. I get roughly 0 0.0888. And then this would just be eight times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay. Now, since we now have some complex ion formed, I can use this KF equation. But the thing is, is that I have zero, I have this number and I have this number. Where's the variable, right? The variable is always going to be the one that you have a zero for, because from what we just said a couple of minutes ago, it's not really zero. It's going to be very, very, very close to zero, but never, you know, completely gone. So we're going to label this as X because we're saying that whatever is left over for the cadmium is going to be so close to zero that we're just doing this for simplicity purposes. And now these are your values that we're going to put into the KF equation. Now, what's the KF equation? It's basically the same thing as any K equation, right? It's products divided by the reactants raised to their coefficients. Just know that for these, for your complex ions, all of these are aqueous. They're all in solution, so they all count. So Kf would be, if we just set it up, right? We have the concentration of, I have to do double brackets now, the concentration of Cd, no, no, hold on. Brackets comes, there we go. CD NH3, four, close the bracket, raise that to the two plus, then close that bracket, times the, actually that's the only one on the top. And then on the bottom you have the CD two plus, times by the concentration of the NH3. And that has to be raised to the fourth because you have a four in front of the NH3. Okay, so the KF we found from the back of the book, 1.3 times 10 to the seventh. This is the eight times 10 to the negative fourth. This is going to be so close to zero, but we need a variable, so that's gonna be X. And then this is what's left over, 0 0.0888. Okay, so 1.3 times 10 to the seventh equals Let's see, actually I could just put that number on the top and then we have the two numbers on the bottom. So we have eight times 10 to the negative fourth, X on the bottom, 0 0.0888 to the fourth. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways that we can do this problem. We can cross multiply. I think that would probably be pretty easy. So I'm going to take this value and cross multiply it by this. Now, if you need to do the 0 0.0888 uh, raised to the fourth and replace it with one number and then times it by this, go, go for it. I'm just gonna do it all in one shot and let's see if we get the same, roughly the same answer. So I'm gonna do 0 0.0888 raised to the fourth and I'm gonna times it by 1.3 times 10 to the seventh. Okay, so I get basically 808 point three, four, and that's times by X equals eight times 10 to the negative fourth. Now just solve for X, right? I'm just going to divide on both sides by that 808 point three, four, eight oh eights. Good album. This cancels out and now we have X equals Let's see, eight times 10 to the negative fourth divided by 808.34. I get roughly 9.90 times 10 
to the negative seventh, and that's molarity. And we wanted to find out that cal cadmium ion concentration. We said that the cadmium ion was just X. So it would literally be just the same number, 9.90 times 10 to the negative seventh molarity. And that's it. And do you see how the X value, 9.90 times 10 to the negative seventh, that's very, 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 very close to zero. So that's why we can make that approximation. All right? Okay. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. If you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.